Hello grade 12s and welcome to this lesson on sketching functions. Let's join Karen and her students as they discuss this in more detail. Now when a function is stretched by the same factor, both vertically and horizontally, it is said to have been enlarged by that factor. Depending on the enlargement factor, an enlargement can also be a reduction. Rather than exploring a transformation from first principle, as we did with the translations of reflections, we're going straight to the graph program that we've been using to see how these transformations work. Great, I like that program. Before we do that, let's define an enlargement, sometimes also called a dilation. Sort of like a balloon. You can stretch it in both ways. More or less right, Cindy. Before we go to the graphing program, let me clarify something here. I'll draw a set of axes and plot an arbitrary point. When we talk about stretching or compressing a function, focusing on a vertical stretch first, then what we really mean is that the distance of the point on the function from the x-axis is changed by some scale factor. If we stretch or compress the distance from the x-axis to this point vertically, then it means that we move it along this line. What is clear is that the x value of the point will not change. What will happen if the scale factor is, say, 2? Good question, Saboho. What we do is we start by measuring the distance from the x-axis here. We call that distance A. If the scale factor is 2, then the point will move to distance of 2 times A from the x-axis to here. That is called a stretch. The distance of the point from the x-axis has been stretched. What if the point was below the x-axis? Another good question. Once again, we could start out by measuring the distance from the x-axis, calling the distance b. If the scale factor again is 2, then the point will move the distance to 2 times b from the x-axis. Again, it's a stretch because the distance of the point from the x-axis has been stretched. In other words, the direction from the x-axis doesn't change. If the point was originally above the x-axis, it'll stay above the x-axis. And if it was below the x-axis, it'll always stay below the x-axis. It's quite right. What changes is the distance from the x-axis. If that is a stretch, does the compression work in the opposite direction? Absolutely. I've drawn that here. If the scale factor is less than 1, say a half, then the distance becomes half A and B, and the points move closer to the x-axis. With that result, let's have a look at the computer program. Once again, I have a function f of x. At present, it's set to f of x equals x squared. Again, I have a slider to change the value of a, which in this case is my scale factor. And I have a new function, g of x equals a times f of x. Now by changing the scale factor, we should see exactly what we saw on the sketch. Because it's sometimes hard to see exactly what is happening with a dilation, I have these buttons here that allow me to hide the graphs and just show a few points on the graph. Okay, so if we change A from 1 to 2, then all those points should move further away from the x-axis. I think you're right, but let's check. See, I'm not just a pretty face. What happens when we move the marker to a position less than 1 but greater than 0? Well, what would you expect to happen? Well, I guess the points of the transformed functions would end up closer to the x-axis than the original points of the function. Why do you ask when you know the answer? <laughs> Let's confirm this. I love it. One last question. Please turn the graph back on so we can see what happens as the values of A change. Mm, there you have it. That gave the impression that the arms of the parabola were moving closer together. But that is not really what happened, is it? That is exactly why I wanted us to look at all the individual points first. The point making up the graph all moved further away from the x-axis as they were stretched up. Now this gave the impression that the arms move together. To understand this vertical stretch transformation, we need to focus our attention on the points on the graph. The usefulness of the computer program is that it enables us to change our current function to any other function and see whether changing the scale factor has some impact on another function. Have a look. 
I've reset A to 1, which changes the function, and now press the OK button. Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn off the graphs again because I want us to concentrate on how the enlargement acts on the points of the graph. This time we have a hyperbola. That's correct, we have a hyperbola. I chose this deliberately because it highlights the action of the stretching on all the points of the original graph. If we change A from the one which we have now to 2, then all those points should once again move further away from the x-axis. There's only one way to be sure. Let's check. I'm getting the hang of this. I suppose then that when we move the marker to a position less than 1 but greater than 0, then the points of the transformed function will be moving closer to the x-axis than the points of the original function. Let's confirm that. That's great. One last question. Please turn the graph back on and let's see what happens to them when the value of A changes. Okay. Just as you guessed. Well done. How did people ever see this so clearly and easily without computer programs? Let us try to summarize what we saw in that demonstration. The function g of x equals a times f of x is a vertical stretch of the function f of x with a scale factor of a. This is a stretch for a greater than 1 and a compression for 0 smaller than a smaller than 1. That leaves us with a horizontal stretch and I suggest that we go straight back to the graphing program. Now once again I have a function f of x. For the moment this is set to f of x equals sine of x and the slider is currently set to a scale factor of 1. This time my new function is g of x equals f of a times x. Now by changing the scale factor we can see how it impacts on the points of the graph. It's often hard to see exactly what is happening with stretches, so I'll show you just a few points on the graph. Okay, so if we change A from 1 to 2, will all the points move further away from the y-axis? I'm afraid not. Oh, that's a surprise. Doesn't that mean to get the points to move further away from the y-axis, we need to make the scale factor less than 1? Well, let's see. Despite these surprises, the same principle will still apply when we can stretch and shrink the graph in a horizontal direction. Please turn the graph back on and let's see what happens to them when we have the values of A change. Have a look. That actually gave more of a sense of stretching and shrinking. Although I agree with you, it was a better idea to start out by looking at the points. To complete our knowledge, let's examine the hyperbola. I've reset a to 1. First I'll change the function, look in the dialog box. Then I press OK. Now I'm turning off the graphs because I want us to concentrate on how the enlargements act on the points of the graph. I'm not going to get caught out again. Let me think about this. We've changed the a value from 1, which was now 2. And then all of the points should once again move closer to the y-axis. There's only one way to be sure. Right again, Cindy Swa, which means that if we move the marker to a position less than 1 but greater than 0, then the points of the transform function end up further away from the y-axis than the points of the original function. Another test run. It's like magic. Can you see what happens to the value of A when you turn the graphs back on? Amazing, isn't it? I'm losing track. Won't you give us a quick summary again? In this demonstration, we've seen that the function g of x equals f of a times x is a horizontal stretch of the function f of x with a scale factor of a. This is a stretch for 0 smaller than a smaller than 1 and a horizontal compression or reduction for a greater than 1. If we combine a vertical and a horizontal stretch of a function by the same factor, say a, then the function has been enlarged by a factor of a. For example, g of x equals a times f of x over a is an enlargement of f of x by a factor of a. And with that, we have summarized the different kinds of transformations of functions that are of interest to us. 
Thank you for joining us, Great Tofs. Remember to look at the tasks for this section in the functions and inverses task video. You'll also be able to learn more about functions on our website, that's www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.